All right, so let's talk about what you need to make a broom. What materials you need? You need nylon string, you need a drill, and of course a small bit for drilling your hole on your broom handle. You need a broom handle that I don't have here right now. You need a vise for flattening out the broom corn if you're going to make a shaker. You do need some kind of uh, heavy duty shears, some broom nails. You also need a broom needle. Now you don't particularly need waxed linen to sew your broom down, but I like it so. You need something to sew your broom down with. These are just kind of handy. It's a weaver right tool. It's usually done used for basketry, but sometimes when I'm trying to straighten up my sewing on the broom, I'll use that. Uh, most importantly, you need a broom spindle. Broom spindle. Broom spindle. There you go. And you see this has already been loaded with the twine. And you need some broom corn. So we're going to talk about broom corn real quick here. The type of broom making that I do is kind of the old traditional broom, broom making that uses both the hurl or the broomy looking part and the knurl. Okay, and the knurl is actually what you braid with. We're going to talk about um, sizing them and uh, soaking them and, and dyed broom corn that does not have the knurl on it. But um, you do need some broom corn. And you need a broomstick. Now, here's the deal about a broomstick. I'll be showing a traditional finished broomstick. And I'll also be showing some uh, harvested broomsticks. You can make a broom out of anything that you can take and whack hard against a tree and it not break. So, and those to me are some of the most interesting ones. But that's basically what you need to make a broom starting out. We are going to make a cobweb broom. So they are super great for getting rid of cobwebs and things that are kind of high up when you are vertically challenged. How's that? But if you've ever used a cobweb broom, they are wonderful. And they're really, really easy to tie up and a very good beginning project into broom making. So today's project is the cobweb broom. So let's talk about broom corn a little bit. Um, when you're looking at broom corn, you're looking at the length of the knurl. Okay, so if I line this all up approximately where that hurl begins and the knurl that you'll see that there's a whole lot of different lengths there depending on where you're at in a broom is what size broom corn that you want okay so we are going to do a broom to start out with here okay and you'll notice that this one does not require a big long braid so the stuff that's longer and thinner, this is kind of uh, on the thicker side, I call those pretties, the guys that are short and fat, I call those uglies. Now, everybody has their own purpose, and these just tend to get underneath uh, the broom when we start layering, and the pretties, or the long ones, are the ones that we want on the outside for the braid, because you can braid further, right? So I want to show you the difference uh, in using short knurl for this one and using longer pretties for a different broom. This broom is a round broom, or some people call them a witch's broom, okay? But see the amount of braid on this one in comparison to the braid on that one, okay? And of course it's bigger, but it's a layered broom. And you see also that this is just a plain finished broom broomstick. And then this is actually from some cedar from Missouri, I think. 
Anyway, so just uh, uh, to show you the difference in, <clears throat> these are what I call thin, long pretties, and these are going to be more on the fat, stubbly side. Good for making cobweb rooms and real good for making our first project. So the other thing that you want to do then is sort out your broom corn <clears throat> for the project that you're doing, okay? So I don't need a lot of lovely pretties on this one, so I'm going to sort through my broom corn, and then I'm going to put it in a bucket of water to soak for about 15 to 20 minutes, and it needs to be warm water, okay? So I'll sort through my broom corn, and I'll get it soaking, and when it's ready, we'll come back and we'll start tying one on. So uh, first thing we want to do is, uh, I always use my spindle to uh, get my broomstick ready. So. Here's my broomstick, and I want to measure about four fingers up. And you can put a mark there. I don't usually. All I'm going to do is, actually, I take that back. Let's do the rounded end first. Rounded end. There's a flat end and a rounded end. We're going to do the rounded end first. And what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole in it. And the reason for that is... There's my hole. The reason for that is, is that brooms need to hang. Uh, if they don't hang, then the fibers bend and then your broom doesn't work for diddly squat. So you want to hang up your broom. And in order to hang up your broom, you gotta thread a hanger through there. So that's why you have the hole, okay? When we go to the opposite end here, we're gonna make our mark. And like I say, I don't usually mark it. You could just do a little mark there or you could use a pencil or pen or whatever uh, but you want it about four fingers from the bottom and what we're going to do is we're going to take our broom nail and we're going to tap it in here with a hammer one of those things i forgot to tell you needed okay so when you hammer it in you don't want it flush You want it, uh, I'm going to say, a fourth of the way up. I don't know if you can see that or not. So it's uh, it's in there, but it's you know it's not flush with it. And the reason that you do that is is because this is what's going to hold that tie on as you keep working through it, so that it doesn't pull off the broomstick. Okay. So and you want it parallel to that drilled hole that you just put in. Now, this isn't a big deal on this one because it's uniform, it's a nice finished broom handle, but if you're going to use harvested brooms, what you need to do is lay them down and see which way they're going to lay flat against the wall, and then that will be what dictates how your hole is drilled so that it lays flat against the wall, okay? So I've got my broom spindle ready, I've been soaking my broom corn here, and I'm going to make a couple jerk string has been wound up with nylon string and it comes off the top of the spindle. Okay. The feet are going to go here. The room is going to be here in your lap. All right. So, but the first thing we need to do is make a couple jerk strings. They don't need to be real long, but I always make a couple of them because when you get your broom all done, if you don't have a jerk string, you don't have anything to jerk it through there. So you're just going to make a loop and do an overhand knot. I do it around my finger and then pull those both through. Nice little knot, overhand knot. Okay, and I'll do two or three of these because they tend to disappear for some reason. And like I say, they're one of those things that you have to have when you get the broom tied up. It's my husband sneezing. Okay, so once again, there's a loop. And I'm just going to do an overhand knot. So I'll go around my finger. Tuck that through. It's my husband sneezing. And we're going to do it one more time. So we've got three jerk strings. Now you don't need three jerk strings. I'm just doing it in case they disappear. And that way you get to see it three times. Once again, I'm going to put the ends together. And I'm going to go around my finger. 
and through the loop, tighten it up, okay? All my jerk strings. And okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is do an overhand knot. Just one little knot there, slip knot, so it keeps it from slipping off. All right, when I put this on, I want it to tighten up on the short string, not the long string, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a loop, and then I'm gonna flip the loop over, and grab the long string, and bring it through the hoop. And that should make it tighten up on the short string. Let's see. So I'm gonna take my broom handle, I'm gonna put it, broomstick, sorry, broom handle. It's not critical, but it does make it easier. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do is an overhand knot. That keeps it from slipping off. And then we're gonna make a loop. Put it on top of your hand, so it looks like this. All right, see that's on top of? Take that loop, turn it upside down and then go through the hole and grab the long string. Let's do it one more time. I've got my break, basically. It's an overhand knot, okay? So, I'm gonna make a loop around those three fingers, and then I'm just gonna lay that in my hand. See how that's over the top of that. Then, I'm gonna turn that loop upside down upside down and I'm gonna grab that long piece through the loop and that'll tighten it up. Oop, on my thing. So let me do it one more time. Around the three, it's on top of it. Turn it over and grab the long part of it. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this on my broomstick. Now this is something that's really important. If you are right-handed, you want your right hand, see this is uh, where the, uh, actually I got this set up wrong, um, the table is, when I'm doing my broom corn, the, the, the broom is going to be underneath the table, okay? So I need my broomstick handle to the right, okay? And I'm going to tighten this up. But my broom needs to go underneath the, the, uh, the table. Because this is where all my broom corn and whatever is going to be up here. And the reason for that is if you're right-handed, you're going to jerk string out this way. If you have it the opposite way, you're trying to make a jerk from your left hand. Okay. So your jerk string, or your, in my case, right hand, is going to be to the outside of the table. All right. Not to the inside. Okay, so this would be the inside to the table. It's hard to see it with my hand. This is to the outside. There's nothing over here. No. So I've had my broom corn over in my uh, five gallon bucket here in warm water, soaking for about eh, 15, 20 minutes. So I'm gonna bring some of this out and lay it on the table and see what I've got. Now, because I'm doing a cobweb, I don't need a lot of these longies, okay, because I don't want to do a lot of weaving on this. So I can do some shorties, and I don't want real stubby ones, like that one would be for underneath. But I'm going to get some relatively kind of medium-sized ones, and I want to make sure that I have oops, an odd amount of broom corn on this. Because when I start weaving... I'm going to do like nine, eight, nine. Um, I want to make sure that I have an odd amount so I can do a continuous weave. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this thing about three times. So one, two, three. Okay. So then I'm going to start laying in my broom corn. So I, what I like to do is this. I put one in. 
And when I press this in, I want it, I don't want it right on the connection here. I want it up just a little bit and I'm going to crease it. Okay. So then the other ones that I put in, I'm going to put in by two. And that way I will know when I get this all covered that I have an odd amount. Helps from screwing up. So I put two in there. You see that I'm not right where they connect, but a little bit above. And I'm going to crease. And I'm going to take two more. Do the same thing. Crease it and turn it just a little bit. So when I turn it a little bit, it puts it pressure on here. And then they hold together. And I'm going to put another couple on here. Scoop that up just a little bit. Press it. So I've got room for about two more in here. And just to make sure, I'm going to count that to make sure that it is an odd amount. All right, so I'm going to put these last two in here. And I'm going to crease it. So I'm going to start here where I can see that um, broom nails underneath there. One, two, must be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so then I'm going to wrap for about three rows. Okay, so there's one. So I'm going to like turn it and pull. This is the third one, three or four. And here's the thing about broom corn. I can see where I started by looking where that nails again, and so then I'm going to start doing my braid. The thing about broom corn is that uh, it is um, it's actually a type of sorghum. So my leg's going to get real wet here. Uh, and it's once it's wet, it's kind of sticky. So um, it, it'll, it feels like you had your hands in honey water when it's nice and wet. So this is what we're going to do. Broom corn will go up and down. It does not go sideways well. So I want to lift this, rotate it down, use my finger. This is the big, this, if anything you want to learn, it's this. Pull that string over and then crease. That's going to be every other one over and under. So if this is under, this is over. I'm going to rotate it down a little bit, put it underneath. Take this finger, the left finger in my case, pull it over a little bit and crease it. Same thing once again, down, under, pull that finger over. If you don't pull that over, what will happen is you will get a real sloppy looking braid. We want our braids nice and tight. See how that is? And pull, and crease it. And because we've put an odd number on here, it's a continuous weave. Okay. And you keep going for as long as you want, or as long as a, you have a, a, the neural to weave. So it's almost like rowing a boat. Pull. So if you needed an upper body workout, this works really well. See how nice and tight that is? That's what we're looking for. Nice and tight. And it comes from bringing that finger over and then making the crease. Bring your finger over, make the crease. So I'm just going to continue this. And I'll show you how to do your jerk string. And finish off the broom. So there's basically two parts to making a broom. There's this part where you're actually tying the broom on. And then there's the sewing of the broom. And a lot of times broom makers will just they'll do a whole bunch of these and then um, let them sit and then go back and sew them. So I'm starting to get a little bit short here. See how they're getting kind of stubby. So I'll probably do oh, maybe three or four more here. So sort of like your 
much on a dog team. You're only as fast as your slowest dog. When you are tying on a broom, you can only go as far as your shortest neural on a broom stalk. Just a little broom making history for you while we finish this up. Benjamin Franklin was the one that brought broom corn seeds back from France and got us started with the brooms. And like I said, brooms are made with broom corn, which is actually a sorghum. It grows down in, I think, like Mexico hot places. I don't think you can grow it here, but I don't know that for sure, so don't quote me. Okay, so I'm getting pretty dang close here. And that's a pretty nice braid on that. So I am going to come around to my beginning point, and I can see that by looking at that, uh, well, actually I could get under there and see the, the nail too, but I can see it by where that string starts. So what I'm going to do now, so I'm going to finish this up, so I have my jerk string, and I'm going to place it underneath what I'm tying. I want to make sure that the knot is to the right. So I'm going to pull this through. If I've got a knot on the left hand side, it's not going to pull through. It's going to snag up on the knot, right? So I've got this all the way to the right and I'm going to wrap three or four times on it, keeping it flat. And I don't want to go on top of the string. I want to go next to the string. So this is number three wrap. one more time. Number four wrap. Okay, so now what I want to do, doesn't matter if you use scissors or I use an exacto, cut your string. Now, when you cut your string, make sure that that thumb's holding this tight. Okay, so I'm going to switch that. And I'm going to take this string that I just cut and I'm going to put it through that loop that's on the left hand side of where I'm going to jerk it. I got to keep that pressure on there. So I'm going to take my jerk string, put the knot on the right hand side, and I pull it through. <laughs> Sometimes easier than not, depends on how tight you got it. So I pull that through, and it doesn't matter what you use, just something. And pull it a little bit tighter and trim it off. There you go. So then because I want to trim this part off, what I'll do is I'll take my spindle, put it back outside. And I'll just cut these off. If you put some pressure, excuse me, pressure on it, and then lift them up, you get a nice clean cut. Pressure and a cut. Or you can saw through it, but you don't really need to. Sometimes you can. If it doesn't go all the way through, then just a little pressure. Okay? A little pressure. And my exacto is not real sharp right now. All right, so there's the tied portion of your uh, cobweb broom. Okay, so our next part is to tie this down here with a broom needle, and we'll do that next. Okay, we're going to start sewing down this cobweb broom. And so uh, you don't have to have wax linen, you can use hemp, you can use a lot of different things. But I like wax linen because it gets it nice and tight. So I'm going to take about three, I'm going to call it a yard, but that's probably shorter than that. Okay, and I'm going to take my broom needle. I am going to make a half of whatever I've got, and I'm going to do a lark's head knot on this. So there's your loop. I'm going to take your fingers, 
bring them down and touch them. And that gives you a double loop. I do this on here so you can see. No, I can't see that better. Okay. So let's do it again. This is one long double piece. Okay. That's even. I'm going to take my two fingers. I'm going to put them down towards the floor and bring them together. Then I have two loops. And that's what I'm looking for. Okay. One more time. I have this doubled together, and it's a long length. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to take my thumb and forefinger. I'm going to point them. I have that on the inside of the loop. Inside of the loop, I'm going to point them down to the floor, and then I'm going to put them together, and that gives me a double loop. All right, so remember that we counted like four down that's where you're going to start and the reason you do that is so that you don't try to sew on the broom handle so i still got my loop over here and i'm going to wrap around this a couple times and then i'm going to take what's left of that length and put it through that loop okay then my loop tightens up and I want to tighten this up just a little bit, okay? So now I'm all set to start sewing. So I'm going to take my ends here, and I like to just bend them over and thread them through the eye of the broom needle, okay? These are sharp. So what I want to do now is I'm going to diagonally go underneath here, just for batting out cobwebs and creepy crawlies. All right, so I've redone this again because I had enough. So here's my first stitch, here's my second. So I'm kind of like straight across from it and then I go diagonally underneath and pull that through, tighten those up. Once again, I'm gonna come right across from this guy and go diagonally underneath and pull it through. And I'm going to do this all the way around. So you can stay with me here while I do this. It won't take long. Usually you can do like two or three of these. I usually do two. I don't get real fancy on cobweb brooms. They're pretty basic. But they're fun. And they're a good first project to learn with. And they're super useful. So it's like if you get the bug and you think, I have to make 10,000 of these because I know everybody will love them. Then you can do that. Because basically, really, all you need is a stick and some broom foam. Okay. So I want to do this all the way around because I want to show you what you do when you get done with it to end it. Like I say, you're going to do two or three rounds of this and you just start the whole process over again by measuring out about three yards, making a loop, doing that large head knot at the top. So I'm almost at the end here. This is my um, second to last stitch, I guess. Okay, so what I wanna do to finish this, is go through it, all the way through, pull it tight, cut it off. Pretty simple, huh? Okay, so, and I would do like two, maybe two fingers apart, or I think you can do one finger apart, two to three more of these, okay? So the only other thing left then, once you get that done, <laughs> excuse me, is to put a hanger on your broom. Now remember we did this whole at the beginning, so I just took a piece of broom form. And I am going to make a threader. So I'm going to pull it through there. See, I looped it. And then I'll take my piece of string that I'm going to use for a hanger. Put it through that loop. And then pull it through. Makes it a lot easier. All right, and then I'm going to just do an overhand knot up here. And this could be a little longer. But that's what I had hanging here, so... Overhand knot, and then you can burn that so it doesn't look, you know, ratty. It's nylon, so it'll cinch up. And there's your hanger. 
And there's your broom. So here's your hanger. There's your broom. And like I said, <coughs> I would do um, two to three more rows on this. But um, that's it. So now let's talk about the end because this kind of looks a little bratty. So we can give our broom a haircut. So I don't like that long stuff there. So I mean, you can keep it natural if you want it, but I'm going to trim it up a little bit. So. You can get as artistic as you want. So, but there. So there you go. You have made your first hand-tied broom. Stay tuned with us as we, um, we're starting out small and we're building on our next broom that we're going to make is a round broom, kind of the next one in succession. And it will have a different handle, but... It will look something like this. So, you see there's a lot more braid work and it's a lot bigger. And see it has a couple rows of stitching on it too. So, next project, round broom.